Those are my kids. Um, yeah. So here I talk about a micelle. When you deliver oil compounds, um, you hear about liposomal technology. Liposomal technology is great for injection because you get sustained delivery. But for oral consumption and increasing the bioavailability of something orally, micelles are the way to go. That is basically liposomes when you ingest something. So oils are very hard to deliver. You, you ingest an oil like omega-3 or something like that, a large portion of it just gets wasted. So you want to improve the efficacy, the efficiency of that oil and make it more water soluble so it binds to polar lipids on the outer portion of your gut mucosa and it absorbs, much like the concept of uh, light dissolves light. So if you take oil, add it to water, oil sits on top, but if you have more water to water, you know, obviously they mix together. So my cells do just that. Now my cells basically um, a nanoparticle of a bubble. So that's why I have my kids blowing bubbles and those are my cells, they're just larger. And we take the oils and we have a vitamin E technology where we, we, we add a polyethylene glycol side chain to vitamin E and that makes something that it becomes amphiphilic and this vitamin E that we use can dissolve both in oil or water. That's the term amphiphilic, which I'm sure if, if you think about biochemistry, you study all that stuff. If not, you will soon. But amphiphilic is both water and oil soluble, and it's measured by the hydrolipophilic balance, which is a measurement from zero to 20. And 20 being more water soluble, zero being not water soluble at all, or nonpolar. And I always say um, amphiphilic is kind of like a Democrat, a Republican. It's like in between like a Republican and a Democrat which really you don't have today because you're either a or something, you know, apparently. But <coughs> nonetheless, amphiphilic is right in the middle. Uh, yeah, and I was also say amphiphilic is kind of like a switch hitter in baseball. Um, so what does it all mean? Uh, basically, if you put something into a micelle, you improve the efficiency of the absorption of different nonpolar compounds. Uh, and here's kind of like an example of the brush border membrane and how things absorb. And you can see uh, how liposomes and fat droplets are composed down into micellular structures and then absorbed across the brush border membrane. So if you have ingredients such as like, we, we do a lot of functional ingredients like resveratrol, if you've heard of that. We have a new resveratrol out now. We work with a company called Glandia on it. And it's called um, paracillabid. It's, a, it's an isomer of resveratrol. It's been shown to activate within the kidneys and the liver, and it helps uh, preserve caffeine. It keeps caffeine from being uh, degraded or broken down in the liver. So if you take if you take that form of resveratrol with caffeine, the caffeine will last for like 10, 12 hours. So it sustains the caffeine because it gives like second, third liver bypass. It just keeps going, going. But it's it's activated by enzymes, so it doesn't hurt your liver. It's very safe and uh, it's it's an activating. It's an enzyme activator as opposed to adding like an ethyl ester or something like that, like a statin, where it kind of just really does a lot of damage to your liver. This does not do that. But things like phosphatidylserine, which are natural lipids in the brain, but they're hard to absorb. So those incorporate into my cells. And if you get that micelle to enter blood plasma, you can improve the efficiency of phosphatidylserine into the brain. Same with DHA. PQQ is a new compound that we've developed a free acid form of PQQ. I forget how to pronounce it, pyroloquinquinone. But it's been shown to increase mitochondrial biogenesis, uh, improve or grow new nerve cells in the brain. CoQ10 is similar to PQQ. However, it uh, provides the energy for PQQ in order to have mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, uh, so using my cells to increase the bioavailability is a well-known thing. It's, it's published. Here's just some of our patents that we have. Um, and clinical studies that we've performed with our partners, um, patents. I search my name and my cell, and that pops up, which is kind of cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so in a my cell shell. But anyway, those are my kids blowing my cells again. Examples of nonpolar compounds, and when we say nonpolar, we're not talking about polar pairs. We're talking about. Compounds are not water soluble. So astaxanthin is a, uh, it's a the, the super carotenoid that's actually grown. It's fermented from an organism. Um, we work with a company in Israel called Algatech. 
D T omega three is a nonpolar compound. It's a fat, obviously, and we use two forms. We use a fish oil form. We also use a, a species from that's grown from an organism called uh, Schizoschytrium, and uh, we encapsulate that and put that into different beverage food type applications. Curcumin is a natural um, curcumin from turmeric extract, but it's used to add color to different compounds. If you've seen a uh, beverage product or something like that, that's kind of like a yellowish orange color, you'll see it says turmeric extract or curcumin. That needs to be encapsulated. We encapsulate using our vitamin E to add color, get still clear in different functional beverages. And pretty much that all that stuff. And here's some of our ingredients that we sell to the market. And there's some guy, it's like Superman or something. So, do you want superhuman strength, the ability to balance forks, glue to your chest? And what is that? An iron with bricks on it? So if you want to have these same types of effects, this superhuman power, then utilizing these types of technologies allow to increase the brain's uh, effectiveness by having these compounds absorbed. Uh, that's our PQQ ingredient, actually can increase mitochondrial biogenesis in the brain. However, uh, prior to us, they produced a PQQ that was a disodium form. And the disodium form would precipitate in the presence of acid in the gut, and then it would form the free acid form, which is nonpolar, so it doesn't absorb. So we've taken the nonpolar form, the free acid form, this PQQ ingredient, we've encapsulated it. Uh, there's plenty of studies showing that it increases mitochondrial biogenesis. More towards um, uh, mitochondrial biogenesis in the brain and mitochondrial biogenesis uh, in muscle cells. So it takes one mitochondrial cell and will uh, utilize um, the energy within the mitochondrial cell to produce a second mitochondrial cell. So basically, Mr. Taco. <laughs> Yeah, so mitochondrial is just a metabolic explosion, and it just accelerates hypertrophy, the growth of different cells in the body. And we're trying to put this in all different types of products for, to help offset dementia, Alzheimer's, but also just to um, balance nerve cell death as you get older. You just have less of an ability to grow new nerve cells, so we're trying to balance that out. Um, Yeah, so here's the stuff that you're not really interested in anyway. Let's move along. So basically, we could produce a holy grail of different functional ingredients. Um, here's some news blurbs that went out about um, that Israeli company, Algatech, that produces a, um, that manufactures, manufactures an acid xanthan, and we do the toll processing for them to make it encapsulated in order to add it to different fruit beverage products called e Esolve has to appear. And it's been shown to curve neurodegenerative diseases. It's an anti-inflammatory, helps cardiovascular and um, different autoimmune benefits. Our DHA ingredient, uh, through our bicarbonate process, it actually can take uh, this and turn it into this. Enemies, which makes this, and of course this. So, great flavor, a lot, if you take, I mean, some of the DHA products out there, if you put them in a beverage product, it just tastes like dead fish. If you take a soft gel, a fish oil soft gel, just crack one of those open and taste it, and you'll want to like throw up. They're just disgusting. So our job, job is difficult. So big companies will come to us and say, hey, we want to put DHA omega-3 in a beverage product uh, where you actually taste it. Because a soft gel is easy. You just put the fish oil in there, whatever, it sits on the shelf, and degrades, oxidizes, but you swallow it so you never know that it tastes fishy until you burp maybe 20 minutes later. But, so we actually have to preserve it. Uh, we, we bring it in frozen, we use nitrogen, we use our bicarbonate uh, addition to the composition to keep it from tasting bad. And then we have to encapsulate it, then we put it in different beverages, we use nitrogen in the headspace, close it, the nitrogen displaces oxygen in the product and uh, removes all free oxygen and keeps it uh, from oxidizing. Basically, if you remove oxygen from the equation, you never have oxidation. You can't do that in a soft gel. Um, other cognitive ingredients and functional ingredients that we do, like curcumin. Here's an example of some curcumin, uh, which is the same curcumin, but at different levels, gives a different color and different particle size. The particle size on the right is probably about 
uh, 25 nanometer. When it gets to further diluted in the gut, it drops down to maybe 15 or 10. Uh, and then the second is about 150 nanometer. The third is probably around 4 or 500 nanometer. The definition, the scientific definition of nanotechnology is less than 100 nanometers. Uh, delivered non-polar compounds like curcumin, resveratrol, phosphatidylserine, if not encapsulated the right way, put into a beverage application, <coughs> could look like the bottom of a rocky ocean floor. So we encapsulate a lot of processing to make sure that when you produce a beverage, you don't get sediment. If you ever pick up a vitamin water or some other product where you look at the bottom, you see sediment. Um, a lot of times, it's just that can be avoided by certain processing and encapsulation, different things like that. Um, and then I talked about before, we have, I think now we actually have like five different patents on a transparent delivery to improve bioavailability. And this is just kind of a cartoon animation of the liporeceptor protein mechanism with transparent. You bind the outside of a cell when you, um, when you pick up iron, and then when you deliver the iron, it turns into a halo transparent and recycles back out of the cell looking for more iron to pick up. And we bind different proteins, probiotics, to that lactoferrin or transferrin in order to absorb uh, those different compounds. And that's basically what I say there. So it's very similar to like a train. There's another cartoon animation of, uh, of a protein active drug that we bind to the transferrin. And just like a train, it just kind of carries its cargo to a specific site, drops it off, and then recycles back out. And I'm saying this other stuff. Same stuff. I just said this. So here's uh, an understanding of that. You have um, the apo transferrin, halo transferrin, iron loaded, and then drops off the compound, turns into iron unloaded, and then the transferrin recycles back out. Uh, other functional ingredients that we do, like I said before, like DHA omega 3 contains real fish, even if it's from, I mentioned this, the organism schizo schitrium. Even though it's a plant source, algae-based DHA omega-3, it still will taste fishy, if not even more fishy than fish oil. It's because the fish, it's funny because people always say, well, let's use the plant-based omega-3 because that won't taste fishy because it's from plant. Because obviously the fish oil will taste fishy because it's from fish. But the fish eat the algae, that's why the fish tastes fishy. So whether it's algae-based DHA omega-3 or fish, they all taste fishy. And if not properly handled, frozen, nitrogen blanketed, where you know you remove the oxygen from the container, if not handled properly, it could taste really bad. So we do take the processes to make sure it's safe, and we keep them from tasting and smelling like trash. Um, and this is just kind of a cartoon animation. You, the, the, the chaos that can occur and the chaos that needs to be a, avoided is just so complex. Uh, and we, we approach it from all different types of um, points in order to avoid that chaos. And again, we use our, our encapsulation processes, our bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, you use, you use natural potassium bicarbonate. But potassium bicarbonate, when you add it to an application, it will bind to free oxygen within the application and remove it. And then you have the carbonation fizzing out, and that binds free oxygen in the headspace, removes that. And then bicarbonate will also bind to residual metals to, to, to keep that from catalyzing with um, oils and DHA and keep a reaction from occurring. And so that's the maze of chaos and you just have to find the right route to take in order to avoid such chaos. Uh, our bicarbonate process, it's as simple as why people add baking soda to the refrigerator. It just deodorizes whatever bad, what's called organoleptics, or bad smells, and things like that. <coughs> Basically, it's just binding to oxygen, removing it. It's absorbing oxygen, it's absorbing moisture, it's absorbing any heavy metals that might be in that space to keep reactions from occurring. Then there's glutathione. I don't know if you guys have heard of glutathione. Well, glutathione is a very strong brain antioxidant, three amino acid brain antioxidant. And we bind glutathione to lactoferrin, and um, that we have a stable form that can be added to beverages, it can be taken as a standalone product, but it doesn't smell or taste like rotten eggs. Standard glutathione, as soon as it gets hydrolyzed with water, uh, it releases sulfuric gas and it just smells and tastes disgusting, really bad. 
So basically, and, oh, that's it. Yeah. So anyway, so when I say it tastes and smells like rotten eggs, I don't mean this. I don't mean this, and I definitely don't mean this. <laughs>